Welcome to Front Row, hosted by Economy.lk. And today we have Mrs. Kamaya Pereira, Principal of KPMG in Sri Lanka. Kamaya, you have many years of experience in supply chain management and also uh, now we are talking more about innovations uh, and the Internet of Things, so to speak. Uh, what exactly is the Internet of Things and how can it help supply chain management? So firstly, thank you for having me and it's great to be here. So to answer your question as to what is IoT or the Internet of Things, so there are a number of definitions which are flying out there, but if we take them all, break it down and simplify it, you could simply say that it is a network of devices which communicate with each other and of course without the interaction of humans and through IP connectivity. So that's what the IoT is. And the IoT has created a huge leap into the future. It has actually fostered the or engineered uh, new business models which are sensory and of course predictive. For supply chains, this means that your supply chain becomes smarter. And I'm sure you've heard of numerous examples from where you can track your products from the factory floor going to the outlet. And uh, uh, coupled with RFID and GPS, you can track almost anything anywhere. For your customers, it means that you can identify their buying patterns, manage your inventory, optimize it, avoid stuck out situations, and of course, meet your customers' needs better. So for supply chain, it is a huge enabler and it is there not, not only at each uh, or certain aspects of the supply chain, but from end to end. Right. And in terms of that, how advanced or backwards is Sri Lanka in terms of using innovations such as the Internet of Things or other innovations in supply chain management? So let me say that based on our experience with the Sri Lankan market and industries, I would say that Sri Lankan entities are receptive towards adopting new technology. And whether it's an SME or a large corporate, well, that is the case in every, uh, in every business. But of course, if you're export driven, then your uh, need to adopt new technology is that much greater because you're catering to a global demanding customer. And of course, you need to remain competitive. But uh, the challenge is for our local entities is that now with IoT everything is connected, you have layers and layers and layers of data. So how do you generate value from it? And that is where the challenge we see lying for our local entities to harness that value, to identify the right solution, carry out the cost benefit analysis and basically pick up what is right. So, Kamaya, a lot of Sri Lankan, multiple Sri Lankan governments over the years have been saying that Sri Lanka can be the next logistics hub and this has been touted by everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, but it doesn't seem to have happened uh, as fast as they think it was going to happen. What are some of the reasons, uh, either through regulations or is it, is it a missed opportunity already? Or are we kind of focusing on something that can't be done? Well, our strategic location has been the, the area of focus for this logistics hub. And I, oh no, the journey is slow, but I would not say that we have either lost the battle or the war. We are making the changes and definitely we're heading the right way. If you look at it, the industries are making investments in this area. We've not stopped, so we've not failed. So the hub regulation came into play in 2013. Now we have the logistics corridors coming up. So we are in the right direction. We are making the investments and we are making those steps, but maybe a little slower, but we've not lost anything yet. If we were to say uh, what would, would we need to pay attention to going forward, perhaps there are challenges around the availability of land in the right locations, having the right infrastructure in place. Land has been made available, but perhaps infrastructure is poor in these areas, which leads to most of the companies not taking up those locations. So perhaps that's something for the regulators to look into, and of course to ensure that the policies that we generate are investor friendly. Right, and in terms of regulations, have we liberalized the logistics industry or sector adequately to encourage foreign logistics firms to come into Sri Lanka? So we're making the tax concessions, we're creating the free ports, 
we are creating uh, the zones and now we're looking at creating a logistics corridor by the Ministry of Megapolis as well. And those policies and procedures are being drafted. And it is up to both the public and the private sector to come together and ensure that these policies are drafted in a manner which is favorable and also connects Sri Lanka to the rest of the world. We can't remain isolated and we need to accept that. So our policies and procedures that we've set need to reflect it as well. If not, Sri Lanka may not be able to harness its potential. Right, on that note, and uh, I thank you very much for taking your time with Front Row. And please join us in the future for Front Row and Economy.lk for similar content. Thank you.